What is up guys, Show Sports back here with another video. In today's video, I have four players who I believe are currently overrated. NBA fans love to give young players crazy comparisons and put such vast expectations on them. NBA fans also love to overrate tons of players by throwing around the word GOAT, which stands for greatest of all time. A word used on a multitude of NBA players past and present. Lastly, a player can be overrated based on the contract he has slash received. Um, calling a player overrated does not mean that the player is bad. It just means that the player isn't as good as people make them out to be. The first one I'm going to discuss is Andrew Wiggins. Coming out of high school and college, Andrew Wiggins was a highly touted prospect and was compared to LeBron James due to his high flying abilities. After being selected first overall in the 2014 NBA Draft by the Cleveland Cavaliers, he was traded to the Minnesota Timberwolves alongside Anthony Bennett in exchange for Kevin Love. Wiggins then went on to win Rookie of the Year award, and up until his third season, he was looking like someone who was going to be special. But since his third year, Wiggins has been basically mediocre. Andrew Wiggins is someone who scores a lot of points, but that's kind of really it. At his 6'8 frame, he is a below average rebounder recording a measly 4.3 rebounds per game in his career. He is someone who is a bad defender and even though he does score a ton of points, he is extremely inefficient. Last year, though he did average 18.1 points per game, he shot 41% from the field and just under 34% from three. And out of 133 players with at least 500 field goal attempts, Andrew Wiggins is 132nd in true shooting percentage. Now, you can attribute these few horrible seasons by Andrew Wiggins to poor coaching or even blame them on Jimmy Butler, but the real reason as to why he's mediocre is he just doesn't have that motivation for the game. Wiggins is someone who has had everything handed to him. I mean, he was the top pick, never had to fight for minutes, and was given a max rookie extension after his third season. And to add insult to injury, his near $30 million contract makes it almost impossible to trade him, so it seems as if the, Thimble, the Timberwolves excuse me, are, will be stuck with him until he becomes a free agent in 2023. The next player on my list is Tobias Harris. Tobias Harris resigned with the Philadelphia 76ers on a five-year, $180 million deal, and that just baffles me. Tobias hasn't done anything in his career to even warrant anything close to that kind of money, and I believe the Sixers made a mistake by giving him that. Last year, Tobias was having a great season for the Los Angeles Clippers, averaging 20.9 points and 7.9 rebounds on 49.6% shooting from the field and 43% shooting from three. But to a shock to everyone, the Clippers decided to trade Tobias at the trade deadline to the Philadelphia Sixers. When he arrived in Philly, his production dipped as his points per game went down from 20.9 to 18.2 but it made sense as his role did change and he went from the first option on the Clippers to a fourth option on the Sixers and you could even argue that he went to a fifth option behind JJ Redick regardless of this the biggest issue was how his efficiencies drastically declined he went from shooting 49.6% from the field 43% shooting from three and a true shooting percentage of 60.5% with the Clippers to 46.9% from the field 32.6% shooting from three and a true shooting percentage of 56.2 on the Sixers. Not to mention his production continued to dip in the playoffs. After that kind of abysmal performance for the Sixers, you would think that they would be hesitant to give a player such as Tobias Harris, who has played on a total of five different teams and someone who has never made an all-star team or an all-NBA team a max contract. Gordon Hayward is a player who has always been solid but never really stood out. It took Hayward seven seasons to make an all-star team and that was enough for the Celtics to sign him to a four-year, $128 million max extension. But with Hayward unfortunately suffering a gruesome leg injury a season ago, it doesn't look like he'll ever live up to that contract. But even without the contract, Gordon Hayward seemed to just be a player who had success in the system and just wasn't worth the max contract that the Celtics gave him. 
Jason Tatum coming out of college and in his early NBA career is someone who has had comparisons to Carmelo Anthony due to his isolation abilities and his love for the long two-point shot. But Jason Tatum doesn't have the incredible scoring ability that a prime Carmelo Anthony had. People were saying Tatum should have won the 2018 Rookie of the Year award even though he only averaged 13.9 points per game. Jason Tatum did have a great postseason in 2018 but was unable to replicate the same success this past season. Now Jason Tatum is someone who I believe will have a great NBA career but to compare him to Carmelo Anthony is just absurd. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please like and sub and share with your friends but that's going to do it for this video guys. I hope you guys enjoy and it's so sports and I'm out. Peace.